Welcome back to Words of Life. I'm Cheryl Gillum. And I'm Bernie Dake. Last week, we began our series on disaster response with Bobby Geary, and we're so glad you're in the studio with us again today. You've, ga- you've given us a, a little bit of the history of disaster services within the Salvation Army and an overview of how it, uh, how it works. Uh, and now we're going to get into some more specific uh, questions for you today. Yeah, Bobby, right out of the gate. Uh, first of all, I'm jealous because what you guys do is the frontline ministry of the mm-hmm. Salvation Army. And uh, my this grown-up job that I have doesn't allow me to do the cool things that you get to do, in my opinion. But you, our listeners may not understand really how we respond or when we respond. Could you kind of help us zero in on the types of response that we do or, or even specific responses? Sure, I'd, I'd be happy to. One of the things that um, we respond to, of course, are those major natural disasters, things like hurricanes, mm. you know, um, uh, the the southeastern area, the southern territory, we have more um, uh, what, what coastline, I guess, mm. um, that could be impacted by hurricanes than anywhere else in the United States. Yeah. So, so hurricanes, tornadoes, um, imagine, you know, Oklahoma all the way over to Georgia, we're, we're constantly battling the, those tornadoes. Mm-hmm. Um, and be, beyond just natural disasters like those or floods or things like that, we also respond to things like um, domestic terrorist situations. Mm-hmm. 9-11 was one of those. Yeah. Um, we, we responded both at the Pentagon and in New York City uh, back in, in 2001. And so, so other things we might also um, respond to would be things like most recently the Pulse nightclub shooting in, mm. in 2016 in Orlando. Yeah. Um, and then we also responded last year to the Uvalde school shooting. Sometimes people don't even know that we're there because, you yeah. know, our presence, uh, you know, we want to stay out of the limelight. It doesn't have to be about us, but we want to be there and offer that, that ministry of care um, to people in need after those, those devastating events, especially our first responders. Part of our mission statement for the Salvation Army is to meet human need in Jesus' name. I don't think that anybody would ever characterize Jesus as someone who bragged about his ministry. <laughs> And we don't do that either. We just go and trust that the Lord will provide. And he's done that. He's given us exposure amongst the public who support us so uh, philanthropically or so generously mm-hmm. through their philanthropy. Uh, but it's because we keep showing up. Mm-hmm. You Last week, you told us that it really is a ministry of presence. And that's a pretty neat thing. Now, I was fortunate enough to be a part of the disaster response at 9-11 mm-hmm. at the Pentagon. And we were living in Springfield, Virginia. I was attending church in Arlington at a Salvation Army, which was the actual closest physical property to where the plane had flown into the Pentagon. And I'm amazed at how you all coordinate all of those volunteers. It is a, an incredible feat, and you guys are to be praised. The attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon have been a travesty of human hatred that has brought our world community together. It has shown us the power of human compassion and the need that we have as people for one another. The whole time there were people handing things out. You really didn't know where it was coming from. You just were glad to get it. The Salvation Army was there making hot food for all the uh, relief workers. The first time I walked into the dome, the bubble, I was just stunned at what I saw, you know, the setup that they had, and the food was fantastic. The folks in those canteens couldn't do enough for you. You know, what do you need? What can we get for you? If we don't have it here, we'll try to figure out where we can get it. The counselors that were there, you know, they let us know that they were available to talk or even to pray. Everything that was being done by the Salvation Army and the Salvationists was done to help the rescue workers do their job. The guys would be coming down with partially melted souls. The army would come down, the guy would sit down, they would take off the boot and put replace new ones on there. Without the comforts, without the comfort food, without the comfort clothes, without any of the comforts, they couldn't have done their job because they would have burned out so quickly. They're true to their cause, the salvation. Without them, man might have not been so lucky at this devastation. We might have been more to the weary than less to the weary. 
Bobby, do people ever reach out to us after a disaster and tell us, you know, thank you or how something might have impacted them? Yeah, actually they do. And um, if you don't mind, I'd like to just share a little excerpt from a letter that was sent to um, the Divisional Disaster Director of Florida Division um, after the the Pulse nightclub shooting Mm -hmm. about our response there. And um, this this letter starts by um, just praising a couple of the individuals that were were serving, and then this is the statement that the one of the on site investigators came up and and shared. Mm-hmm. He said, "You will never know the impact that the Salvation Army made on me personally." Sorry, you might see me get a little emotional with mm, this. It's okay. Yeah. As I was working in the building. When taking breaks from the awful task that I had to do, when coming over to grab a bite or a drink and just to sit and chat with your people, I could not have done my job without your folks there supporting me. From my heart, I cannot even put into words how having you there made my job possible. Mm. So on behalf of the Tampa Orlando Resident Agency of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, thank you for the role you played in working alongside them during this terrible time. Wow. That's that's amazing. It is. We don't go out to these disasters seeking the attention mm-hmm. or seeking the praise, but letters like that really do help to motivate and to go, okay, we're on the right track, Lord. Yeah, you absolutely. know, we're, do, we're your hands and your feet on this earth and we're making a difference. So that's beautiful. Yeah, they certainly do. And, you know, this was one of those, those really um, awful times in our history mm-hmm. And um, just being being there, being present, um, especially to those first responders as they, they manage the devastation, is just pretty tremendous, I think. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Well, we're now going to share an interview we did several years ago with Jeff Jellitz, who is your boss. That's and, right. Uh, he is my boss. <laughs> Jeff's the Emergency Disaster Services Coordinator for the Salvation Army in the Southern Territory. We hope that you'll enjoy this. 